faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird brain. It's a plane. It's I, Walter. I, Walter. Yes, it's I, Walter. Strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. I, Walter, who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend ears with his annoying voice, and who disguised as Walter Interanti, mild-mannered janitor for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth, nonsense, and the American way. And now, another exciting episode in the adventures of I, Walter. Hey everyone, it's Walter from, well, you know what. Anyway, uh, I wasn't sure what to do a podcast on tonight. I actually have no clue because I had some ideas for the last couple of weeks, but then when, you know, push came to shove, I just really have no energy to do a show. So I think it's been almost like two or three weeks. It's hard to believe again that I, you know, decided not to do anything. Um so I figured, okay, well, it's New Year's Day. I keep on procrastinating um, during the holiday of Christmas and Christmas Eve. Oh, uh, yeah, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. I was going to do a podcast then, and the weekend before that I was going to do one, and then I was going to do one last night. And I just keep on procrastinating. I actually had some stuff, I think, material, meaning like maybe some audio file I downloaded and um, put aside and you know what I I just don't feel like it I don't know what it is I'm not starting 2022 well off and in many ways uh, one being financially t- also because I you know not making the kind of money I did before I really had to cut back drastically I I would say I had taken almost um, I hate to say this and it's nothing to be proud about but I had taken almost a sixty seventy thousand dollar cut in pay so um yeah I'm I'm used to living a certain kind of lifestyle and that that drastically changed. Um that being said, um I have not had the energy to do much of anything. Um and this podcast doesn't really get me anywhere. I do it just to kind of vent um before with my previous job which was when I got this started uh many years after working at my previous job. I always had a lot to talk about. Mainly, most of it was just complaining about the damn job. So now that that's out of the picture, um, I think, well, without a doubt, it's definitely, it's almost going to go uh, this April. It'll be two years since I was let go from my old job, and it's been almost a year and a half at the new job. So, um, yeah, it, there was a, a you know tragic life change in my um living situation that left me really out to um to dry and uh very upset still today so the only thing is i'm actually doing it um my time at this present moment i'm doing an an early podcast because i normally do them later at night um almost around midnight but i'm doing it noontime and the reason is is because it is new year's day now, when this gets posted, it's going to be January 2nd or who knows when. And um, they're going to be showing a Doctor Who tonight. Now, my thing is I always purchase shows that I really want to watch, like Doctor Who, um, for the last uh, 11 or 12 years, I've been purchasing Doctor Who. Actually, it's about 15 years. It's hard to believe that started in 2005, but I, I came around to, like, realizing, you know what, um, the only channel I can watch Doctor Who in the U.S. is on BBC America, and I tried last night because they marathon for the last, um, it would be almost like 48 hours. They've been just showing all the new Doctor Whos, none of the old stuff. It's been all brand new material um, since 2005, and... I don't mind watching them, but the amount of commercials in uh, BBC America was just way too much. I mean, it was beyond what I could even stomach. Um, I got to the point, I was like, wow, an hour and a half episode, like if it was a special, 
There was the one, um, you know, a lot of the regeneration ones with the new actors. Uh, there was the Doctor Who 50th anniversary special. Well, normally, yeah, it's about an hour and a half, two hours possibly for a special. Normally about an hour and a half. Well, it was over two hours because there was almost 30 to 45 minutes worth of commercials. And it's like, you know what, this is ridiculous. I can't stay awake. It's driving me crazy, too. I know, short drive. So the bottom line is, um, yeah, shows like I really want to watch. Like, And personally, I liked other Doctor Whos. I, I definitely liked Christopher Eccleston the best. He only did it for one season out of the new group of people. And the other ones weren't too bad. David Tennant was definitely excellent. But it was too much like it won off its original idea of a show, I felt. And um, when it came to Peter Capaldi, I just could. Is that how you say his name? I should know. Um, I just kind of like really almost stopped watching it all together like I did with uh, Sylvester McCoy, which, Matt, if you hear this, you're going to say, well, didn't you just say you want to see Sylvester McCoy this April, which actually I didn't realize that would be my anniversary of being fired from my last job after 18 years. Um, when they're going to have a comic book convention down the street from my house. And Sylvester McCoy's going to be there. And I told Matt, yeah, I'm going to get a ticket for that, uh, you know, because I will see the Doctor Who's, and especially if they're down the street from the house. That's like a no-brainer for me. It is a no-brainer. Matt's probably thinking, yeah, no brains. Um, so anyway, um, getting back on track, yeah, I mean... I I actually did physically stop watching. I was so insulted by Sylvester McCoy, so I stopped watching the episodes. I actually owned them all. I bought a box set from Germany of all the Sylvester McCoy. I didn't have to go out and like buy the individual ones because there was times I actually couldn't watch it either. I had um, issues in my personal life, and I was not allowed to watch Doctor Who. And it had nothing to do with the show. It just so happened um, my living situation would not allow me to uh, watch the program. So I missed out on a couple of Sylvester McCoys. And plus, they were just playing god-awful bad, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, when when Peter Capaldi, wherever how you say his name, came on, I was like back in that kind of that state. Some of Matt Smith's, I was watching a couple of them last night on BBC America, and I don't remember a lot of that stuff, so I think I kind of tuned out Matt Smith after a while, too. But the only thing that actually I did make it through Capaldi's was because of the actress who played, um, I think the character's name was Bill Potts or something like that. It was a, a black girl. She was really cute, and she was very funny. I actually met her down in Philadelphia at a comic book convention when she showed up. She's British. She's not from the U.S., but she was so good. She was how good was she? Um, it actually kept me watching the show um, through Capaldi's because otherwise I would have not made it through those. I would have just said, you know what, screw it. I'll wait to the next time around and whoever they picked. And I know at first I I will admit when I heard about Jodie Whittaker taking over, I was a little bit leery uh, because they actually did what they you know Tom Baker made as a joke. Eons ago, when he played the Doctor, he says, well, I'm going to probably... He did it in a, a joking manner. He said, well, the next Doctor Who is going to be a, a it's going to be a female, a woman. And he was kind of... Yeah, he was just joking about it. So that stuck in people's... In, um, in their mind for many years, obviously. So they finally did it with Jodie Whittaker, and I was actually uh, a little bit disappointed at first. I was a little worried. So I started watching maybe a film here here or there of hers, a television program, which I could not get into. And I was like, you know what? She's actually a pretty damn good actor. I'm going to like check her out when she, well, obviously, because I had no choice if I want to watch Doctor Who. And I checked it out. I was like, wow, this is so much better than that garbage they put on, um, you know, the last couple years of Doctor Who. I mean, they brought it back, which I'm glad about, 2005. And it's been on ever since. Now it's 20, uh, 2020. So, yeah, think about it. That's 15 years. And um, 
you know, it had its ups and downs. There were some episodes that were better than other ones. But um, I'm a little leery tonight when I actually can comment about the new Doctor Who because I'm just afraid, like, you know, did they shoot their load? I part of my my uh, word in on that. Did they shoot their load on the on the first season with her? Like, is it going to be as good as uh, as um, the first season? And they actually did an episode last New Year, so it was a year from today. They did an episode um, with a dialect, and um, you know, there's pepper pot robots. Did I say that right? And it was really good. It was awesome. So, you know, I put the bar really high for her because I actually really like Jody a lot um, as the Doctor Who. I think she's much better than quite a few of the other ones. Uh, one or two episodes I did go back and watch again over the past year because she was off for a whole year. And the reason I did that, though, was because there's a couple episodes that kind of remind me a little bit of, like, Tom Baker. Um, there was one where they land on this planet that is a kind of equivalent to a UPS store. But the whole set of, setup and the premise of this one particular episode, which the name of it is is uh, leaving my mind, um, it was, you know, I can't remember it. Anyway, um, it kind of reminded me of the Sunmakers from, Tom, you know, when Tom Baker, uh, Lola Ward, who played uh, Leela, um, was on that episode called The Sunmakers, where it had the same premise, kind of. Like, yeah, no, it did. It had the same premise. And it had the same feel with different companions and a different Doctor Who. So, yeah, that one I really fell in love with, and I, I, have to, I had to watch that one, like, a couple times. So, And there was a couple other episodes I really liked with her. Um, with Doc, and there wasn't too many to choose from. The dialect one was another one that was a standalone. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna have the bar pretty high when I you know do my next show. I'm gonna probably say, oh, it was really good, or it was just not what I expected, meaning it was really bad. Um. Anyway, I did put up. Hopefully, everybody can hear me. Um, I always say this every time because I try to get my noise levels. Never can get them right. I'll never do it. And 2020 is not going to be any different. I actually. Didn't put it up. I did throw up a couple stories. I woke up this morning and um, my parents wanted to go out to eat dinner early, like around noontime or 11 o'clock to get pork and sauerkraut because that, you know, I'm part, very small part, Pennsylvania Dutch. And the whole thing with that is it's supposed to bring you good luck for the year. Well, I need all the luck I can get because right now I think... I hate to say it, I might be in like almost six thousand dollars worth of debt, and I don't even know where it where it accumulated from. Um, so yeah, and I'm not making the money I did. So the only where I can go with my credit score, which I mentioned to people, it's like really high right now. It's like eight fifty or something like that. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if that credit score just plummeted it's down to like six hundred and below, which I hope not. I will try to make my payments, but, and I don't know, there's a younger guy at work. He lives on his own. He actually bought a house just recently. He's worked at the same low paying wage job that I have, and he actually invests in um, stocks. Real good looking young guy, um, but he knows how to, you know, you know, keep things rolling and keep his, um, what do you call it, uh, his his uh, score, what do you call it, his credit score, like actually very high. And he's, he knows how to pay bills. Yeah, mine is actually, it's 805 for one transunion and equal fax is 815, which apparently is really good. But I told people, you know, they were saying, oh, well, you got a really high credit score. It's like, it's not going to last. I hate to say this. Because I would just put everything on a credit. Now, this guy I, I'm talking to about at work, his name is Dan, really nice guy. Um, he says he does that. He puts everything on a credit card to build up his credit score, and then he just pays it off um, as soon as the bill comes in. So, you know, at the end of the month. And that's really what I've been trying to do. Unfortunately, I think I'm at the point that be able to pay what I have on the bill, on the credit card is not going to happen. So, um, yeah, I'm actually, I'm depressed about that too. I'm actually very depressed about that. 
So anyway, enough of that. Um, I was listening to Glenn Beck today when I got up. I turned it on, and thank God, because it was like the best of Glenn Beck. He's had a couple different gentlemen cover a show, and it's just been god-awful on Glenn Beck. Um, Trump, I mean Trump, uh, Rush gets a little bit better of a selection of people to cover a show. One I really like, because he's from Pennsylvania, and I've, I've t- I had spoken to the man before, Ken Matthews, and he was only on on unfortunately for one day now that doesn't mean ken matthews may not be may he actually may be back again and the reason i'm saying that is because uh ken matthews um what was i going to say ken matthews um you know he doesn't mind when he can cover and uh, the thing with rush he'll be off for at least another week or so of the beginning of this year in january so that would mean like a lot of these guys can't take off as much. Like Ken Matthews has his own show, but for some reason, if they offer it to him, like even a whole week straight, he would do it because he's smart. He knows that he's got a, a larger, um, a larger amount of listeners through Rush's uh, doing the Rush Limbaugh show. So that actually builds up his cred um, where he does his podcast which is from like Harrisburg like nobody really hears him from Harrisburg unless you're like me where I don't live in Harrisburg I live in in King of Prussia area and uh it's called Narstown but probably most people would be feel more familiar with King of Prussia the word King of Prussia um but I'm sorry I'm cleaning my screen off my monitor shouldn't do that while I'm doing a podcast um but yeah um the thing is, I have iHeartRadio, and I kind of did some research and found out, oh, wait, you can get Ken Matthews on there, and you can listen to him live from Harrisburg? Yeah, I want to do that. So, yeah, that's the only other way people anywhere could listen to him. But I don't think a lot of people invest that much time to do research on Ken Matthews, because a lot of people don't know who he is. He even makes that show. So, anyway, I want to go back to Glenn Beck real quick, and there's a reason for that, because he had, um, it was the best of Glenn Beck from last year, and here he had this woman on, I've seen her face before, she's kind of an attractive woman, Um, has nothing to do with anything I know, but she's from the conservative side, and the thing that kind of um, caught my attention, Glenn Beck was doing a podcast last year with her, Um, she might be possibly running, you know, I don't think it's in her mind to do so, but they're kind of encouraging her to run for president. And her name is Nikki Haley. Did I say her name? It's Nikki Haley. She's actually got a Facebook and I believe a Twitter page. Because I'm looking at her Facebook. I thought she had a Twitter one too. I think she might. So anyway, I was listening to her. I was like, yeah, she's very, um, you know, well-spoken person. And apparently, I believe, I asked a friend, but he didn't get back to me. I believe... Um. Trump wanted her to run for Secretary of State, and she turned it down. She just didn't want, not that she couldn't do it, but her point of views are very conservative, and they might be a little bit too much uh, on the conservative side. So as a Republican candidate, if she would run, I would definitely um, be interested in voting for her. And the funny thing is, now if you look at, like I'm looking at her profile picture, I don't see it at all, but apparently she's got some American, um, Native American blood in her. So that's, you know, and it's not like, oh, I got one eighth or one one hundredth of um, Cherokee Indian in me. No, she's got some Indian blood in her. So that would definitely be a plus, too. And it wouldn't be one of these ridiculous numbers from the left saying, oh, yeah, I'm 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 American Indian as well. No, you're not. You don't you know. You're as much American Indian as I am um, Jewish. You know, it's it's nonsense. Not with Nikki Haley, but I'm I'm drawing a blank on that one uh, Democrat woman who always claims her claim to fame is that she's part Indian and she's not at all. She's not even one one hundredth of American Indian. And if if she has that much in her, she probably doesn't even have a hair on her body that's American Indian. Now, Nikki Haley is a different um, thing altogether, and she's very, you know, well-spoken, like I said, very intelligent. I did leave a voice text for my friend Matt, and I said to him, I said, listen, the only thing I'm a little worried about is, is this going to be turned into, like, she's more well-spoken than, um, 
Oh God. Um, it was the other one was going to run as vice president. Um, I'm drawing a blank on her name and it just turned into a, um, into a circus. I didn't think I was going to have to do this. I had the name and then I distracted myself and it's funny, Matt, you're probably laughing. I actually forgot the, um, Sarah Palin. Okay. I remembered Sarah Palin. I actually knocked it out of my head. Sarah Palin's name. And I love Sarah Palin. Um, but they made her look like such a, an, um, like an idiot that it got to the point that I think it just wasn't going to work for her. And, um, yeah, I'm afraid like now Nikki Haley, she's a well-spoken ultra conservative, but there you go. That's the problem as well. She's, she's very conservative and they're going to find every way to tarnish her reputation Probably make her look like she's done porn. Just to, I'm just exaggerating with that one, but make her look like she's done something so brutally wrong. And you know, these are the same people who say that women need equal rights, but yet they are hypocrites when it comes to actually doing something for equal rights for women. So, um, yeah. Anyway, um, I'm going too far in that direction too now. So anyway, I'm just going to kind of bleed through a couple of the stories I just threw up real quick for New Year's Day. Um, One being, I don't know if you know who Jack Sheldon is, but I guess um, jazz jazz musician died at age 88, but he was well known for um, um, Schoolhouse Rock, it said. It said, you know, there was a thing when, when you're a kid like when I was a kid, that there was a thing on Saturday mornings called Schoolhouse Rock. You learned about American history through these little things that were commercial spots, or not even commercials, they were little educational spots on morning uh, cartoon shows. So it says, Rest in Peace, Jack Sheldon, Schoolhouse Rock, singer and jazz musician, dead at the age of 88. Um, He was also a longtime musical director of the... Uh, Merv Griffin show. So that was kind of kind of weird. And they were showing like a thing that caught my attention though. They they were showing this one thing. It was called I'm Just a Bill back in the day. So I guess he did the music, the musical score for things like that. Um, you know, for the Schoolhouse Rock thing. And for the, again, Merv Griffin show. I th- for some reason they were showing something else that kind of caught my attention it was the peanuts, you know, um, Charlie Brown, you know, thing. But I don't know if he had anything to do with that as well. Okay, let's see. Veteran jazz musician Jack Sheldon has died at the age of 88. Helen from Jacksonville, Florida, he served as a musical director of the Merv Griffin Show for 18 years, as well as voiced several classic episodes of Schoolhouse Rock, including Conjunction Junction, and I'm just a bill. And it goes on. There's there's a little bit more. I do have it on my Facebook page, but nobody ever checks it out. So that's cool with me. Maybe it's probably better. Um, Yeah, I put something up. I saw it. I think my friend put it up, my friend Todd. And it was on New York Post. It says, graphic photo shows Muncie stab and attack victim injuries. And it, you know what? I can't bear to look at it. I feel bad for these Poor, you know, people that were at this synagogue and and for no reason had got brutally attacked. And this one guy, he's got stitches on his forehead. Um, I believe the person who attacked these people at the synagogue came in with, um, with like a machete or something like that. It was something kind of brutal. So this guy has got some pretty nasty marks, and he may not make it, this one guy from the synagogue. And in, in uh, this New York Times Post, uh, you know, article. Um, yeah, it says uh, Rockland County was where it happened, but yeah, the head trauma to this one guy. They were, um, they were, um, what do you call it? They were Hasidic Jews, I guess. Yeah, they were Hasidic Jews, and yeah, it is extremely bad. I mean, I I have to shut down that article because. The picture is just really gruesome. Um, Yeah, I posted a few kind of stories just to get them in there. Um, 
I found one I put up, and it was from Neon Nettle, Neon Nettle, over 250,000 illegals and 500 or 5,500 gang members deported by ICE in 2019. And you know what? That doesn't even scratch the surface because these people coming over our border are just coming over in droves like almost every minute of the day. So, I mean, I'm glad they're doing something, but that, I hate to say it, it's not even really scratching the surface. It's better than nothing, and I hate to say it, the wall apparently has helped a lot, too. Just let people know who are against that. You know, Trump spent all the money on the wall. Um, Yeah, there was another article from, oh, God. Um, Yeah, I can't read the name of the source. Um, It's probably, well... The Red Elephants. Okay, that's the name of it. There was an article I had actually on my Facebook page. I just kind of threw it up real quick. And it says, Attack on Jews by Blacks in New York uh, skyrocketed, and the media ignores attacks attackers who are not white. That's what it says. I'm not just putting these words into my mouth. That's what it says. Hate crimes per 100,000 by race. Whites and non-Hispanics is 1.7. And again, it's hate crimes per 100,000 by race. And then uh, it says FBI hate crime statistics in 2016. And it says hate crimes per by race. So by race. And it says 3.5555 for blacks. Um, And it's got like a chart. So it gives you pretty clear and concise statistics on hate crimes against different nationalities. And it seems number one on this list. And again, you can find this article on my Facebook page, but it's um, the Red Elephants is the name of the web source. Um, Again, it says that it's mainly uh, attacks on Jews by blacks. That's what this article says. So you can take from it what you want but it seems like there's a large hate crime of black people who just don't like jewish people and jews have been attacked throughout history human history like every war and i don't know why i don't understand because um you know they're the most prosperous people they know how to succeed um financially but it seems like other cultures or ethnic backgrounds seem to hold that against the Jewish community. I don't know why. So that was, thank God, that was the last of those kind of stories um, on politics that I kind of just threw up there. Um, Again, I'm kind of looking forward tonight for Doctor Who. Um, You know, I'll probably, I I will probably, um, I'm trying to think of the right word, I will probably like stay up late or actually go to bed and just get up early in the morning and watch it on iTunes. Cause I don't know if I ever finished what I was saying about that, but what I do, cause I can't stand all the freaking commercials on BBC America. So what I'll end up, what I do every season is I end up just buying, um, you know, a season pass on, uh, BBC America. I mean, um, on iTunes for, you know, Doctor Who or some other show. So I can just avoid all the commercials. Um, So, you know, unfortunately, though, it's on tonight at 8 o'clock. So that's prime time. Doctor Who's going to be on. So I might put it on, but I'm probably going to, honestly, I'm going to wait and watch it and not get so distracted by all the, you know, the plethora of commercials on um, that network of BBC America. Now, if you watch the same show, like I had this set up where I could watch shows right live from England on BBC One, BBC Two, and, uh, you know, a whole sleuth of other stations. And, um, yeah, and it was great. But now the thing is, though, um, I like that much better because, um, yeah, you got no commercials. Unfortunately, when I had it, it had to be the same time that Doctor Who and 
if there was any other television program that I would probably be interested in watching live from England, obviously they're behind or, you know, on a different uh, time zone altogether. It's number one. Number two, Doctor Who, my number one show, was off for, um, what is it, like like a year. So, yeah, that's a, that's another, another uh, big issue. So, um, you know, and now it's back. I'm like, I was tempted to, but it's like, okay, I've already bought the show. So that's number one. Actually, a friend of mine, um, Todd, he's actually, he was fighting me tooth and nail on, um, on Disney. Disney's, um, what is it called? Disney's, uh, Disney Plus and for the Mandalorian. Now, he broke down and he actually did uh, purchase it for now to watch that television show called The Mandalorian, which I've said to people, it's really good. And like, um, I think the thing I like is the fact that it reminds me a little bit of... Um, it reminds me a little bit of like... Um, Oh God, I can't remember the name of that show. Um, damn it, um, Kung Fu back in the day. So yeah, that was like number one. Um, so that that was the, the main thing. Um, somebody was ringing our doorbell. I'm afraid to find out who it is. Somebody is going to interrupt my podcast. So um, anyway. Um, yeah, so that that was like the main thing, and the show was actually rather good. So um, I might have to end this soon. I apologize, but yeah, the the um, and it's about a half an hour. But yeah, the Mandalorian I would recommend. So that was number one, and number two, um. What is it? Um, I watched that Star Wars movie. Actually, that was one thing I was going to check up if I have time. I might have to pause my show now. Um, let me see. Yeah, Star Wars was still number one this week. Alrighty, I'm going to have to pause my show. All right. Yeah, that was my friend Matt. He came by the house. He said he did not hear uh, me doing a podcast. If I knew it was coming over, I would have definitely not started one. And you know, or if he wanted to be in the podcast, Matt, I would have, I would have definitely welcomed that. But you got me off guard, and I, I didn't have the equipment set up properly. So anyway, um, yeah. So you heard Matt. Matt, you heard yourself at the very end. I didn't realize you recorded some stuff on there so i i deleted that sorry about that man um anyway i left off there was one other story i was going to mention and i i kind of shut the the per, um the story down it was on uh, schools in new york i thought it was pretty entertaining so anyway on star wars um when i was mentioning that yeah it's up to worldwide um almost Three quarters of a billion dollars, which is nothing to sneeze at. Now, like, domestically, they're saying, oh, it's made the least amount of money of all the Star Wars. I'm speaking about Star Wars. Um, what is it? Episode nine, The Rise of Skywalker, which I actually I really enjoyed it. I'm not going to say anything for those who probably are going to, you know, not that I have a lot of listeners, but they're going to say, oh, you know what? You ruined it for me because that's never going to happen, but just in case. Yeah, it says released 12 days ago, so um, that's not that long um, that Star Wars was released. It was released like, well, actually it might be a week in 12, well, it's 12 days. And it's a domestically, it made almost $400 million, and then internationally it made um, almost... Close to four million, almost. I'm, I'm rounding up the numbers. So all together, between both internationally on the movie and domestically, it's almost made close to eight hundred million dollars. So, you know, hey, that's that's not bad for a movie. Apparently, that the critics are saying is god awful, 
and that fans are complaining about. So I was kind of just glad to see that. Um, folks, if you don't mind, I'm not going to pause the show again, but what I'm going to do is look for that story from New York on the schools real quick. So give me a moment. Um. Um, yeah, because it was pretty interesting. I wonder if I can even do a history check on that. Um, because I don't want to pause again. It just, it's, it's kind of messy doing that. I got one on the attacks, the legals, graphic photos. That would make it so much easier, though. Oh, here we go. It was on the New York Post, actually, too. Um, that story was actually marked December 17th. So what is that like? It's not that old, the story. And, oh, that's a pretty interesting story. I might have to pull this up. I didn't realize what it was about. Anyway, it's it said over 140 New York schools, New York City schools, have grades with 90 Ninety percent state exam f- failure rate, so that's nothing like to be proud of. So the schools throughout New York City, uh, the failure rate is ninety percent. That's that's a bit that's really bad. Um, I heard that I forget what show. If it might have been um, Ken Matthews when he covered, he might have mentioned it. So. Yeah, it says more than 140 New York City elementary and middle schools had at least one grade where more than 90% of the kids flunked their state exams last academic year, according to the Post analysis. A total of 23 schools had at least one entire class where not a single student passed a math or English proficiency test given annually to kids in grades 3 to 8. Behind these figures are individuals said Yantan Chu or something like that. I shouldn't even have tried to make an attempt. A member of the Manhattan's Community Education Council won a parental advisory panel. These are families who count on our schools to educate their children. Um, This is depressing and Shocking. Not well, actually, not to me. So there's a little bit more to go on, and the rest is actually not that difficult for me to read. But um, I just kind of wanted to recap where I left off because I was actually almost going to keep the show short tonight due to the fact that I wanted to watch Doctor Who. Um, yeah, as I was doing this, this this one story kind of caught my 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 eye. I've seen it before. Um, it's kind of weird, but it's, it's a New York post. And that one was actually from, um, just yesterday, uh, given that it is actually January 1st. So it's December 31st. Doctor shocked by a five inch dragon horn sprouting from man's back. It's pretty nasty looking. Um, I don't know what causes this stuff. Is it like, uh, is it skin? protruding or like hard skin or what is it this is not what they meant by grabbing life by the horns a uk man baffled doctors after a five inch cancerous dragon horn sprouted out of his back despite him having no history of skin cancer according to the new study published in the british medical journal this is the unnamed 50 year old day laborers um, protrudence, which has also re- resembled a gnawed talion, uh, talon and pumpkin stem. It looks like a pumpkin, you know, the stem on a pumpkin, was diagnosed with uh, contagious. Well, basically, it says that it was cancerous, so, but it was protruded from his, like, like middle of his back. It does look like almost like a pumpkin stem though. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty nasty looking. Um, huh. Who knows what caused that? I apologize that that actually um, 
caught my attention. I might call my friend Matt back after I'm done this. Um, considering I didn't expect this to happen. Um, yeah, he said he didn't hear my voice text. So I thought I still kind of think Matt. No, nothing against you, or maybe so. But um, I think this was your attempt to sabotage the show, or not even sabotage it, just try to get in. And hey, if if I'm prepared to have you, I have no problem. Um, but you got me off guard, so. And yeah, I haven't hung out. That's the other thing. I haven't hung out with anybody in such a long time. Um, that's another thing. So yeah, it's weird. It's 2020. I I I still can't get over the fact that it is another year um, and that, you know, the past two years have been, you know, I, I've been out of the loop. You know, I, I don't know what else to say. It's just, um, you know, I've been like out of work for almost six months and then I had to look for another job. And, um, yeah, that was not fun. And so much has happened, I guess. But, um, you know, overall, I mean, it's kind of weird. Uh, one thing that actually s- stays in my mind, and you know what, I will end this a little bit early tonight because obviously I don't have much else to talk about. But quite honestly, um, in the back of my mind, you know, I, I, I'm I, still shocked by this whole thing, you know, losing my job. Um, that, you know, it's something I never thought was going to happen happen um so that kind of that, that kind of definitely threw me off too but um and and in the cut and pay that that's one thing that just keeps on going in my mind like i'm i'm still living honestly kind of like in a, in a dream state like i i can't have, i it hasn't sunk in yet that um you know i hey you're not working where you did and i i I, I've said it over over the years that I've done podcasts that I couldn't stand that job. So, um, yeah, it just it really got me off guard. Um, it was kind of funny. Um, yeah, Matt, you did throw me off. So, yeah, touche. Um, there was a couple things I could come up with, but again, I'm I'm just drawing like um, nothing at this point. Uh, yeah, there was, there was something I was going to mention actually about, um, certain movies I even watched. Um, oh, actually, yeah, okay. I'm a little bit back on track, not by much. And again, I do want to end this cause it's, it's just me kind of going in no positive or no direction at all is, uh, I did watch this movie called the lighthouse and I remember a, a friend from my new job who we actually moved to a different plant location, a friend named Kiefer, told me about this movie. Oh, you would really like this. And I did see previews for this movie with William Defall and um, who was the other guy? God, I, I am really bad. Um, Robert Patterson. There we go. But Robert Patterson uh, played in this movie called The Lighthouse, and it is called The Lighthouse. And I really wanted to see it. My friend Matt, who was just over the house, he wanted to see it as well. And it was in the theaters for such a short period of time, we actually both missed out on it. So it was up for me to purchase it. And it was like, okay, well, it's like 14 bucks. I might as well just do that. Um, Not even wait for it to be uh, available to rent. So I rent this, I buy this movie on iTunes, and it was quite unique. I personally thought that Robert Patterson's acting is not that great in one sense of the word, but in another sense, um, he did a pretty good job um, portraying a, you know, a, a guy looking for a job, basically. He was, you know, his character was somebody who had taken this job working with an old man at a lighthouse, um, basically um, because he thought it was quick and easy money, you know, around uh, the mid to late 1800s. And the the guy 
And the White House said, well, hey, you're like the second or third or maybe more person who has taken this job. And um, basically everybody goes mad because they think, oh, this is an easy job and I can handle being secluded from everybody else and just, you know, being in this lighthouse all the time, day in and day out. But these guys take this job and they end up going mad. And it's like, yeah, this is a little bit close to real life. You know, you take certain jobs and you expect to, hey, well, it pays really well. And, in, you know, maybe I'm contradicting myself. It pays really well and it's a great job. But then you find out the job is can drive you insane. And that's what it does to the, the character in this movie, uh, The Lighthouse. And, um, yeah, that, that was one part of it. And, um, you know, the character P- Patterson plays, he starts to hallucinate seeing, uh, saying that he sees a siren or a mermaid. And then he, he imagines he's, he's so bored that his character is constantly, like, masturbating within the film like not like 24 7 like that's not a that's not the only thing you see oh my god you see robert patterson masturbating constantly no no it's but it's made that yeah the guy's so bored he has he doesn't know what to do with himself so he has you know the free up his boredom he's masturbating like quite a bit and uh then then there's uh, robert defoe's character and he's farting all the time so it's just like, and the thing about the film, it, it to let you know it's an art film. The way it was shot, it was shot with, excuse me, the, the dimensions of four by three. So it kind of remind me of the Blair Witch Project uh, when that came out, because that was shot in like in those dimensions. Um, the film is shot instead of gritty, it's shot very clear, like you can see the imagery very clearly. But the imagery within the lighthouse and the job task that Robert Patterson had to do were not so, um, you know, pretty or whatever. They were gritty jobs. They were disgusting jobs, like emptying bedpans underneath um, his bed and under Robert Robert um, Robert um, Defoe's. Um, yeah, isn't it Robert Defoe? His uh, his um, his bed his bedpan and doing like crappy jobs, literally crappy jobs. And you've seen like the deterioration of Patterson. Let me look up their names real quick just to make sure I'm not getting them wrong. I know Robert Peterson, but I just want to make sure I'm getting the other name right. So yeah, you can get that film for, you know, actually fairly cheap. Um, Okay, I pulled it up. Now, that's another thing I'm looking. I'm glad I did pull this up now. The ratings of the film, The Lighthouse, actually got on Rotten Tomatoes 92%, and the audience is pretty high. It's 71%. I wouldn't say that's like a, a low percentage of people who either liked it or didn't. I mean, it's it's pretty pretty well accepted. Yeah, Robert Patterson and William Defoe. I keep on calling William Defoe Robert Defoe, so it's William Defoe. So um, they both did an excellent job with the movie. Um, looking at like some publicity shots of William Defoe, and you don't recognize either one, even Robert Patterson. You do not recognize these char- these actors in the movie. Um, they look really gritty and different. And um, you know, I'm like an OCD person. I you know I'm not much for filth and mess and stuff like that now matt's probably laughing at that because he was just in the room and i had everything just all over the place so it looks like there's no room for me to even walk um which is not always the case really it's much better um when i'm not doing podcasts and just having everything all over the place um but what was i going to say yeah in this movie the the lighthouse within side was filthy it was disgusting um you know it was in and even you know the black and white black and white shows everything that's why like some people like to to, to do that yeah you know, use black and white film now the thing was with this film also um yeah the characters were gritty the inside of the interior of the lighthouse was gritty um 
and Robert Patterson's fall into madness went pretty quickly in the film. Now, it's a two-hour film, and um, it followed followed excuse me it followed the footsteps very much so in my opinion of like a racer head because a racer head had its grittiness and it was an industrial film so the thing is so was also this movie of the lighthouse it had that industrial fit uh feel and even when they showed um uh, Robert Patterson seeing a siren first in his dreams and then in in in, in his mind, um, almost like I don't want to say real life, but it was his his demise into madness. He actually seen the siren, um, with without being in 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 his dream state or whatever, not having a nightmare because it started out like uh, it seems like. William Defoe put that in his head. He said, "Oh yeah, my my last the last person who had taken this job uh, fell into complete madness, and he swore that he saw a siren on um, on on the outside the lighthouse that was trying to like lure him. And obviously, that was you know that put that thing in his head that state." Um, or, or thought into Robert Patterson's head because then he started having a dream of um, seeing a, a, a siren or a, a mermaid. And then after a while, he not only imagined, uh, he put that image in his head from his dream state of that siren and he was um, using it as that image of her actually having, you know, the proper female private part, and he was having sex with that. Um, Robert Robert Patterson, I apologize, Robert Patterson. So, yeah, and, and there was some imagery in within the film that was just really, like, right out of the page of a David Lynch film, and more so out of David Lynch's, um, eraser head. So, um, now that I've taught, I had spoken about way, maybe a little bit longer than I wanted to, and it is almost an hour anyway, folks. So, um, yeah, I guess part of it is I just got distracted from Matt. He kind of threw me off. So, um, I'm just going to finish up this tonight. Um, it is the first one for 2020. And, um, I honestly, I'm not going to like say, oh, I'll be back within, you know, by the weekend. Who knows? And maybe I will be. But I can't like give any honest answer at this point with when I'll do my next podcast. Before it was kind of easy because I just always had stuff that I just wanted to get off my chest. And, you know, once again, that's not the case. It's, you know, it hasn't been, um, I don't really want to use the word as exciting because um, it has not. But, um, yeah, there's just like there's like nothing really to to mention. So um, anyway, folks, um, yeah, once again, I'm, I also I'm kind of like interested in checking out that, uh, you know, the new Doctor Who, which will be coming up in it a few hours for me even. So, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that's good because I'm, I'm not expecting it to be, but, you know, go in with low expectations and then come out with probably a little bit higher than that. So anyway, everyone, oh, this is pretty cool. I'm looking at this now. Some, some black gentleman actually is wearing the new, which I'm glad to see, um, is wearing the new, uh, Doctor Who costume. So that's that's pretty cool. I give the guy kudos. An older guy, too. Um, i seen some other guy. He was actually wearing uh, Jodie Whittaker um, Doctor Who costume. I, I like to see that, you know, some guys that are willing to step out, you know, because most of the, the stuff, attire, available for people to buy, is strictly made in women's sizes, and it's called... 
like for her, uh, her universe. It's like, well, you know what? A majority of the Doctor Who fans for many years have been predominantly male males. And, you know, you're you're taking away something um, that, you know, guys have enjoyed for many years. You know, I grew up with Doctor Who. I can actually say that, too. Because I've watched it since I was, like, 12 years old. And I'm 52. I'll be 53 in a few, a few weeks. So, anyway, yeah, I, I apologize for uh, droning on. And... You know, hopefully this is somewhat okay, and I did slip in that story, kind of. Oh, you know, I did an okay job um, with, with with that whole thing with the schools in New York. I think that's just that's kind of like entertaining. It should be. It's a really bad thing that you know, um, you know, it just shows you how the education system. Is not what it's cracked up to be, uh, meaning that, okay, if these kids can't pass, you know, math and English, that's a reflection on um, the school system itself. I mean, let's face it. What are you going to say, that it's not? Because it is. So anyway, um, folks, um, I apologize about the show tonight, and I will try to eventually do another podcast. It's it's a whole new year. It's for me, you know, it's the beginning of 2020. It's hard to believe another year older for everyone and everything. So have a good one. This is Walter from my Walter signing off for now. <laughs>